you'll use the SQL development workspace to query and otherwise manage your table data and schemas. Before you can start using it, you're going to want to create a new connection. I've clicked on the new connection icon. The first thing you'll want to do is give your new connection a name, which I'll just call localhost since we're going to talk to the local database server. Host name 127.0.0.1, which is the IP address for localhost. I'll just log in as root for the purposes of this tutorial. Next, you'll want to provide your password. And I'm just going to store it in what they refer to as the vault, which means I'm not going to have to constantly provide my password every time I want to use this connection. So I pressed OK. You can test the connection if you'd like. And indeed, MySQL Workbench tells us that it is able to connect. So I'll press OK. I'll press OK again. And this new connection is saved into MySQL Workbench. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and just double click on your new connection. And what that will do is open up the SQL editor as indicated by the tab, which appears at the top of MySQL Workbench. This is a pretty nice interface feature, I think, because you can open multiple tabs and kind of jump back and forth to the Workbench homepage as necessary. So back to the SQL editor tab. And as you'll see below, there are a number of databases that you can manage or otherwise interact with at this point. So I'll go ahead and click on the Sakila database, which pulls up a list of the by now increasingly familiar set of tables. From here, you can perform a wide variety of tasks, including perhaps most notably querying a table. So for instance, let's go ahead and query the actor table, which is probably by now becoming a familiar theme for you. So I'll go ahead and right click on the actor table and you'll see this select rows limit 1000 option. And I'll go ahead and select that rather quickly. As you can see, we are presented with a list of all rows in the actor table. Very easy way to quickly query a particular table. Interestingly, and this is a huge advantage over using the MySQL command line client, for instance, Suppose you were executing a particular query on a regular basis, maybe not repeatedly, but once every 30 minutes. I can promise you, as you begin doing work with MySQL, this sort of feature will become highly desirable. Suppose you're executing a query on a regular basis and would very much prefer to forego having to perform the series of steps that we just did to pull up this data. What you can do is you can save particular queries as snippets. You can click on the star icon and enter a name for this particular snippet, which this is a pretty easy query. Select everything from the actor table. So we'll just call it select all actors. I'll press OK and I'll close this results tab. And you'll see that you have a number of different tabs. You'll see that a snippets item has been made available within the snippets tab. So what you can do is just double click on that. A nice shortcut to execute a query is done by pressing control enter. Sure enough, those results appear. I can modify my query. And again, I realize I'm jumping ahead of things because in the next section, we'll talk about creating, retrieving, updating, and deleting data queries. So what that query syntax entails, but nonetheless, this should be easy enough to understand. We are going to select the first name and only the first name from the actor table. So what I can do is again, hit control enter and we're greeted with all of the first names found in that table. Again, I can go over to the snippets list saver and select first names from actor table, press OK, close those queries and you'll see we have the second snippet has been added. So very easy way to build up a list of very useful queries. You can also create a table within the SQL development workspace. So if I just go ahead and return to the overview tab, I can click the add table option. Continuing with the DVD store theme, suppose you wanted to start tracking all of the directors associated with a film. I can go ahead and create the table name. We'll use the singular form of director in order to keep with the conventions already embraced by the Sequila database. 
And if you look down at the bottom of this pop-up window, you'll see a variety of different options, many of which I haven't introduced you to yet, but will do so later in the video. However, this one should be quite familiar, the columns feature. And of course, columns relates to the columns found in the table. This will be, of course, our primary key for the director table, which I'll call ID. Integer makes sense. It's a primary key, not null, unsigned, and automatically incrementing. Let's just add one more column to this. So the director's name, you can tab over to the data type. As you can see, the default is vercare with 45 character limit. So I'm going to change that to 255. And again, we wouldn't want it to be null, so I'll enable that checkbox. And when you're ready to create that table, you can go ahead and press apply. And what's interesting, I think, particularly for learning purposes, is that MySQL Workbench will show you the SQL query that is about to be executed. So we're, of course, creating a new table. You should by now be very familiar with this, as we've gone over it repeatedly in previous sections. Create table. This is just a different way to specify that we want it to go to the Sequila database. The table is called director, ID, name, primary key is ID. We'll press apply. And if we press finish and then close, you'll see that the director table has been added to the Sequila database. Once created, you want to perhaps add a few new rows to the director table. So you can right click the director table icon, click edit table data. So what you'll want to do next is go ahead and just enter the name of a director and you can go ahead and press enter at that point. You can also kind of stretch out the column in order to see the entire value. And what you're going to want to do is press the apply changes to data icon. And you'll know you need to press this because the little star appears when the data hasn't yet been saved. So I'll go ahead and press that. Again, you're greeted with the query used to insert this new row. I'll press apply and then finish the overview tab and select all rows. You'll see the newly added row in the output. You also have the option of editing a previously entered value. So I'll return to the director table, edit table data. I actually don't know what Steven Spielberg's middle initial is, but let's pretend it's T can make that change. Again, apply those changes and you'll see now an update statement. Update director, set name equal to Steven T. Spielberg, where ID equals one. I'll press apply, finish, and those changes have been made. Finally, of course, you can delete tables rather easily. So let's just go ahead and remove this director table since we were just using it for demonstration purposes. I've right clicked on the table. I'll drop table, apply, finish, and we're done. So a very useful way to query data to manipulate different parts of the table schema. I've only showed you just a small part of the SQL development workspace capabilities, but we'll certainly return to some of the other more advanced features later in the video. So next up, let's take a look at what I think is the most interesting of the three workspaces, which is the data modeling workspace.